Hey, glad you made it. This is Mr. Heinrich. We're looking at another progress check from AP Classroom. This is Unit 3, Number 2 for AP Physics 1. A block sits at rest on a horizontal surface. One end of the spring is attached to the block, and the other end of the spring is attached to a wall, as shown in the figure. The block is initially at position x equals 0, where the spring is at its natural length. The block is then pushed to the left, compressing the spring. The block is released from rest from position x equals negative a. All frictional forces are negligible. Consider the system that consists of the block and the spring. Figure 2 shows an energy bar chart that represents the kinetic energy k and the elastic potential energy u sub s of the system when the block is released from rest at position x equals negative a. So it's important before we do part a to remember two things. The total mechanical energy of the spring block system is tied up in both items. Sometimes the energy is completely in the block, sometimes the energy is completely in the spring. And we call the energy in the block the kinetic energy, and the energy in the spring is the elastic potential energy. Part A. Draw shaded bars that represent K and U sub S of the system to complete the energy bar chart shown in figure 3 for when the block is at positions X equals 0, and x equals positive a divided by 2. All right, so they're talking about right here, what's the energy of our system, and what's my energy when the spring block system is right at this a divided by 2 position? Well, they've given us the energy at x equals negative a right here. If the block was right here, we would have complete compression of the spring, and the block would be momentarily at rest. So you can see all the energy of the system is tied up in the potential energy of the spring, and there is zero energy for the kinetic energy. And when we have zero energy for either one of these, they do want us to put a line indicating that it has zero energy. So looking at position zero, pretend like we were here at negative A. As soon as the spring starts to unfurl, it starts pushing the block, begins accelerating it, and increasing its velocity. When the block gets to this equilibrium position, we are at max velocity. How do I know that? When we get to x equals 0, the spring has given up all its energy, it's at its equilibrium length, and therefore it has no energy, but the block has all the energy in the form of kinetic energy. So we're going to draw that in. So here we are at the paper for part A. I have the original graph drawn in when we are at negative A. When we get to equilibrium, once again, that spring has given up all its energy, and the block now holds all that energy. And so we still need to represent the same height bar graph for K here as we did for elastic potential energy at negative A. Don't forget they want that line here. But the real question is, what's going on here? Now most students would say, well, we're at the halfway mark. This is A divided by 2. So maybe both of these have half of the mechanical energy. So I do a bar here and a bar here. That would actually be incorrect. The correct answer is that a quarter of your mechanical energy is in the form of elastic potential energy. And three quarters of your energy is in the form of kinetic energy. It's not asking you to justify this, but this is the case. I will quickly show you why this is the case right now. If I have my max u, I would call that 1 half k a squared, right? And if I had my a divided by 2 energy, I would say 1 half k a divided by 2 squared. So now what would happen here is I would get 1 half k a squared over 4. Now, if I took both of these and divided them by one another, and I'm going to do that real quick, I'll say a divided by 2, which was 1 half k a squared over 4. I'm just setting up a ratio right now over my u max. These halves would cross out. This k would cross out. The a squared would cross out. And you could see what I get. I get 1 fourth to 1. I have a quarter of the energy in a divided by 2 compared to my energy when I'm at my maximum amplitude on either side of equilibrium. So that's why we have a quarter of the energy, which means the other three quarters of the energy must be in the form of kinetic energy. 
Again, you didn't have to show that justification, but I want you to understand why that's the case. Moving on to part B. Starting with the conservation of energy, derive an expression for the speed of the block as it passes through position x equals positive a divided by 2. Express your answers in terms of k, m, a, and physical constants as appropriate. All right, here's our scenario for part B. And I've drawn out our model in the two different locations I want to consider. Remember, they want us to use the conservation of energy. I'll call that my initial position, and I'll call this my final position. My initial mechanical energy will be equal to my final mechanical energy. Remember, if there's no non-conservative forces like friction or someone externally pushing or pulling the system, then we simply get to say my initial mechanical energy equals my final mechanical energy. So what's my initial mechanical energy? We already discussed it. This is the elastic potential energy if I'm at this position right here. What happens when I get to this position? Well, we just did bar graphs for that, right? We have both types of energy involved. So we should have mu sub s initial equals mu sub s final plus kinetic final, correct? And I got ahead of myself here and I already wrote down my mu sub s initial. And you might be asking, why don't we have a negative right here? Well, you can put it if you want, but you're about to square your A and thus get rid of your negative. It's completely up to you. But this would be our expression Just like that. Now I plug this in for my mu sub s i already equals, what's my mu sub s f? I would say one half k a divided by two squared plus one half m v squared. So now all we have to do is doctor this up a bit, rearrange some items. I'm gonna simplify some things real fast. Now I can see my two times my four here gives me an eight, so Right below this, I'll write 1 eighth Ka squared plus 1 half mv squared, and over here 1 half Ka squared. And let's just multiply everything by 8. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to multiply everything by 8 real fast. And when I do that, I get 4 Ka squared equals Ka squared. That looks nice. Plus, again, 8 times a half would be 4 m v squared. So we have like terms here. I'm going to take my k a squared, I'm going to subtract it to this side, which would give me 3 k a squared equals 4 m v squared. Remember, we're looking for our velocity, so I'm going to come over here to the space I have. I would divide both sides by 4 m, and I'm going to get 3 k a squared divided by 4 m and all of that stuff equals v squared. Take the square root of both sides, and you got your answer right there. That's what you'd put down, the square root of 3ka squared over 4m. Done. Let's move on to part C. All right, part C. Figure 4 shows a graph of the total mechanical energy of the block spring system as a function of the position of the block x. On figure 4, sketch and label a graph of the kinetic energy k and the elastic potential energy U sub S of the system as a function of the position X of the block. And there's our graph right there. So let's use the ideas we've already discussed. At negative A and positive A, we would have maximum elastic potential energy. So it would make sense to put a dot here and a dot here. And we would have at our equilibrium position, no energy in the spring. So I put a dot here. So this would be the graph for the elastic potential energy. You would have a U shape that came down and curved to zero and then curved upward to the other point that we have at this location. And it's just the flip-flop of this if you look at kinetic energy. At negative A and positive A, you have no velocity in the system. All the energy is in spring potential energy and therefore we have zero kinetic energy. So I'd put zero energy and zero energy for my kinetic energy, and at the equilibrium position, all of my energy is in the velocity of the block, so I would have a maximum kinetic energy, and I would draw a graph that looked something like what my cursor just did. So let's draw it on our paper. So once again, maximum, maximum, minimum for my elastic potential energy. Here we go, and... 
Yeah, pretty good. And you want to make sure you label this. I'm going to call that one U sub S. And then again, for my kinetic energy, no energy, no energy at my maximum amplitudes for kinetic energy, maximum energy at equilibrium. When that spring has given all of its energy to the block in the form of kinetic energy. So again, label that one. Part D. Indicate how the total mechanical energy and the kinetic energy at x equals positive a divided by 2 would change, if at all, if there were non-negligible friction between the block and the surface. That is to say there's friction now and we need to consider it at a divided by 2. So at a divided by 2, they want to know two things. They want to know what's happening to the mechanical energy and what's happening to the kinetic energy if there is friction in the system. So you can simply say this, if friction is acting, friction is doing work and taking mechanical energy out of the system. The total mechanical energy reduces. And then say, at A divided by two, the spring is still at the same position as before, so the spring potential energy does not change. Therefore, kinetic energy must be the thing that reduced to agree with the total mechanical energy decreasing. So I hope that helped you out. Mr. Heinrich signing out. Like, subscribe. I'll talk to you guys on the next one.